All right, so in this video, what we're gonna show you is how to use a file arithmetic and logic instruction. Now we're gonna use a FAL instruction and we're gonna start controlling lights in a state machine type of manner. And, it, in, and basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and use this just as you see it flashing through your screen right now. We're going to use this as an, uh, a finite state machine. So we're going to go through this and we're going to actually go through the simulation logic and as it goes as a one indication. So it, we have this as a uh, indicator right now or our increment by one um, that we're loading in basically different like uh, like word levels, if you would. So let's uh, let's quickly go through this. As you see, it's running right now. You can see the, the lights are flashing and they are working on the actual trainer. So let's go through this and at least show you how I did this. All right, so uh, real quick, what we did is we come up here and we put the first indicator up here, right? So this, if you look, this is the actual FAL instruction. And uh, you can see right here, if you've seen any of my other FLL, uh, FAL instruction uh, videos, basically what I did is uh, I came in here and I used this. And I'm, what I'm doing is I'm trying to show this used in a different light um, and show how powerful these different instructions are can be used. Right, so what I'm doing is I'm again taking the instruction control and I'm, I'm basically singling that out and putting it indirectly that's calling to that destination. And indirectly, it's, it's uh, cycling through itself through the expression, right? So I have another dent right here that is loading in values and I'll show you this. It's loading in values coming in here and these values right here will load in. now. All I'm doing to, to get the lights to cut on is I'm actually coming in and loading these values right here. So say for instance, I wanted uh, light one to cut on like just like that, right? So what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, well, if I call zero, I want one to come on. I want by basically my word to be one, right? So if I look at this, the first bit zero, bit zero would be on. If I look at word two, like if you, so it's just, the same as using binary coded decimal, right? So think about this, right? So if I want the second one to come on, right, then it's a two. If I want the third one to come on, then it's going to be a four, right? Which uh, the third one would be two because of the simple fact that we are going through a standard IO card, which is 16 bits, right? Which is 16 outputs, right? So what we're gonna do here, and I've, I've actually came in here and put this down here so uh, what we can do is I'll, I'll change this real quick just to kind of simulate this stuff out to show you this can be used in just a finite state machine and instead of using a compute right here what we'll do is we'll throw a move in <clears throat> we'll throw a move instruction in here and we'll basically take this move this down to here and we're basically going to take the lights and we're going to take the I was just basically testing out just showing a different pattern a different way to do things and uh, but this is a, again what is what is actually going to be Intel so I'll, I'll kind of go through that and show you that right now okay so as we go through this right what we're doing is again we're, we're indexing this by one so this is not a um, you know we, we talked about this in the past is you can do this in all or increment we're doing it increment right so we're doing a one shot and we're incrementing this stuff. Now it's it's currently in the state of auto indexing. And I have an auto indexing if I'm gonna do all 16 bits that it will actually stop and not only, it would, would only do again 16 bits until I reset it. Now I'll show you that as using that as uh, again the length of 13. So let's go through and change this to a length of 13 and let's come in and do that and then it should stop as far as it goes. Now I may need to change this to 12 because there's a really only that many we're using. So yeah, I do need to change that to 12. So let's do that. I think it's actually, um, <clears throat> let's see if this, this works, maybe 11. But uh, the, the stop is, is again going to actually index and then latch that bit in there and then it will stop actually cycling the lights, okay? Until what I have here, so we've explained this this first logic, right? We explained the, the bits right here. Even though this is still indexing, this auto indexing is based upon this timer here. 
it's still auto indexing and it's doing a one shot it's still doing that but it's stopping because the simple fact of what we've done is we've stopped and we've we've latched in this stop bit right here right so we said the length right here which we're coming and deriving from the fal instruction we're linking that down and we're coming down and in, into this and we're saying okay if you have equaled 12 then we want to latch you in and then stop it now on the counter side to that the uh, the the button uh, D3 right di3 D input 3 which on the trainer that's what it is then if I hold that down then it will reset everything and start back over and I'll show you that just right now so now it's actually indexing back over because again what we've done is we've reset that you've seen that in the logic and you've seen that actually on live on the actual trainer now counter to that we can also do all of this singly right we can do that one by one and i'll show you all of this so what we're going to do is we're going to shut the auto sequence off and then we're going to actually come back in and we're going to do this manually now you see i've cut the auto off which was i was using this uh, uh input di 15 or which 15 which is the input 15 on that card i was i turned it off now if i push the button which is uh di zero which is the very first input on card three right what it's going to do is it's going to increment this fal instruction by one and i want you to watch when the destination changes because it's not going to change based upon a one two three four five it's going to change upon what we have loaded inside of the actual the indirect addressing and i'll show you that So now you've actually seen how that works, right? You've actually seen it go through the cycles. You've actually seen how it indexes. You've seen the the um, words being called, right? So what you what basically I'll show you the the lat the the next sequence of this this ladder logic, and I'll spread this out so you can see the whole word again. So you you've I've actually explained to you just recently that this first this first thing is actually showing the words that we're using right so again if we want to cut bit uh, you know our, our uh, output six on then we're going to come down and we're going to put our put our word as right here all right it's basically binary coded decimal right but this is really really simple so 13 in decimal form would equal bit 5 in which is actually bit 6 but bit 5 right here that we're talking about right so light uh then five and then bit five right so this is a, basically we're using we're calling an array of information we're calling an array of information right here and we're loading that array of information down here into the actual output card very very simple but you see and i'm using the state control right like a finite state control if you would i'm using the position if the position is equal to zero, it's going to come in here and load a one into that first signal, right? So the green light is actually on right now because, again, that's the very first light. Now, when it comes down to it, when it comes down, if I push the, uh, the button again, right? If I push the button again, it's going to index to the very first position. Watch. Okay, so now it's indexed to the very first position. <clears throat> and the reason and you see this as a two right here is because it's actually not, again, it's not really a one. You see this is position one, but is calling for this indirect addressing right here. So again, if we look at this, this indirect addressing is looking for that, right? So it's actually calling for this down here is calling for this number right here. So let's go through that and show you a little bit more. So now, now that we understand how the FAL is being used in a finite state control, right? And I'm not saying that 
you know, highly recommend doing this, but you can. What we're gonna do too in the very next video is we're gonna actually control some motion with this, right? So again, like like knowing how to use these tools and knowing how to, you know, stretch them and how powerful they are are very, very like, I mean, just it's very empowering to know that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually in the very next video, we're gonna control some, we're gonna take these lights out. And we're gonna control some servo controls with this. So um, without further ado, so right here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna push this button one more time. You're gonna see it's gonna index to the very next light. So you see now it's in position two, which we look at position two up here, right? Position two, the FAL instruction is in position two. It's calling for position two word. In the position two word, right? So in number two word, it's a four, right? So it's pushing a four down here. So you see that, right? It's pushing a four down here, right? So if, if, you, if you're not really familiar with the FAL instruction, the last three or four videos I've done have been on the FLL, uh, FAL instruction. They show me building all of this. They show me building different things and showing you different lights of how to use that instruction. But again, I'm showing you in this instance how to use it like a finite state machine. So we're gonna push the button one more time and we're gonna to index to this very next one. Right, so now we're in state three, right? So we're basically saying state three light control on, right? So this is now it's pushing to eight, which is again, the equivalent to the binary coded decimal of the actual bit level, right? You see that bit on right now? It's basically, it's the fourth bit, which is basically, you know, that's going to be that on that output card, right? So if you think about it, if you look at this output card, right? So we go to monitor this output card. We can see right here that this fourth bit, right, or this, this, this one, two, three, four, which is actually three, it, it's actually, but you're counting zero too, so think about it, right? It, it, it's zero, we went through zero is state one, zero, one is uh, state two, th two is state three, and three is four, so th these are outputs, right? So we're actually calling for outputs. So this is, you see how this is actually transitioning and working. Now, even if I throw it back in automatic right now, it's gonna pick up exactly where it left off, but first, See that, that stop sequence is in there, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually reset that stop. Okay, so now I've reset the stop. Now if I actually turn that knob again and our, uh, turn on 15, which is DI15, right, which is the switch, then it's gonna automatically start sequencing again. You're gonna see the lights start sequencing through, and I'll, I'll let that sequence through and we'll talk about the position and how it's actually going through a little bit closer. Okay, so you see it actually going through and you see it going through and, and loading in the word right here, right? It's loading in the word that we're going to actually use in these positions. So going through this, we'll watch this as it, as it resets and goes through, right? So um, now we've hit our stop again. So let's actually, let's just do this, change this so it automatically, uh, it keeps going so that we can actually watch this stuff, right? So uh, first and foremost, let me, let me reset that again. Okay, so now it's it's functioning again. Now the state machine's coming in, now it's out of four, now it's out of five. So you can actually watch this stuff, right? It's nine. So you can see how these are coming in and loading. Now let me, let me pull this over so you can see the actual bits changing, right? So you can see the bits changing as it's actually changing the light as well. So again, it's using it just like a state control would. So could you use this for a very, very simple um, on-off scenario? Yes, you could use this for a very, very on-off scenario, very simple, or you can put a pattern of something in here, right? So let's just say you need to use uh, two solenoids at one time, or you need to use like 16 states for something very simple or even more elaborate. You can have as many states as really as you want to inside of the FAL instruction. Just make sure you're using it the, the proper way. But again, coming back to it, you can use this stuff and use it for many different things, right? You can load this word for whatever you want to. Because what we're doing, if I can you know, really break this down, 
even closer. Now I'm breaking down a really, really simple scenario. All I'm doing is saying, hey, you're in state one, two, three, or four, or five. I'm saying based upon the position, I'm saying based upon that, we're loading in a set value into this actual uh, word. This We're loading in a set word from the actual array of data that we have. We're loading that into the actual output card, right? So when it comes to right here, when it comes to 10, it's gonna load in this 1024, which is gonna be right here. It's gonna actually pop in that specific uh, binary um, into that that actual card so that's the same way state control is done oftentimes um, we forget that in state control too we don't have to keep it as simple as just that right so let's think about this indirect address addressing right here is coming on where we're using the expression right here we're saying okay so what the position here is doing is the position is calling for this one it's gonna call for that one to actually load Right, so this one actually going to come in here, and you're going to point to a different one each time that indexes. Right, each time the position changes, you're going to load in a different value. So we can put these values as whatever we wanted to. Right, I can put these values as, uh, like, let's just say, for instance, I wanted this as a three, and this as a eighteen. Um, that's obviously going to cut on different bits. Right, so if you come in here now. You're going to see different things come in here now once we get to again watch once we get to those positions it's going to come into a different value see that was three that's 18. so what it's going to do is going to actually when you come in it's going to load in different things so now it's not going to be just that one light it's going to be on it's going to be several lights cut on at one time so you you're, you can actually see see it has two different lights cut on and then it comes on a whole different pattern Right, it's just that simple in how to control it. And now what you're doing, again, what you're doing is you're manipulating, right? I'm just putting in a very, very, very uh, simple way of using standard binary coded decimals, right? You, you basically go from, if you want to use bit zero, it's one. If you want to use bit uh, two, then you know then you go to two, you go to, actually you go to zero, one, and then you come back and you, you so you're changing your decimals right so if you've seen the way the decimals laid out right that's exactly what we're doing that's all we're doing really 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 simple way but this okay so all of these are loading into this based upon the position of the actual fal now with this understanding we now have a base understanding of what we can do Right, we have a base understanding of what we can do. So what we're going to do in the very next video is I'm going to take the same exact controls and I'm going to control this servo motor that I have on this table. Right now, I'm going to do that so that you can see that you know the the power of these instructions. Right, they're not necessarily now. I don't recommend using a servo motor for this case, but this is an example, and I want to show a real world scenario. Right, generally you would have something like solenoids, lights. Uh, maybe some you know different different controls you would cut on very very simple controls you could do this something like in a compact logics you can you can I mean you can do this in a control logics like we're doing right here but again I, what I'm trying to show and impress here is the power of something this simple right we've showed you how to do this FAL instruction in many different platforms many different ways and I want to show you and just open up your your perspective to show that you can do this in, in many different ways and I'm simulating this logic right here right it's very very simple logic nothing real complicated so in the very next video what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to use a servo in this whole loop and we're gonna get this done on that one so we'll see you guys on the next one